Project Heritage presents Canopy Kids on ECTV. Keep working, I'm working on my core. The hidden part of me that makes me who I am is my core. Is my core. Yeah. Way down deep inside where only God can see is my core. Is my core. When I'm worshiping, praying When I practice all that God's saying When I'm listening, reading Then my spirit I am feeding Working on my core Keep working, I'm working on my core I'm working on my core Keep working on my core Start down deep inside In my core In my core The things I think about And friendships in my life Build my core Build my core When I'm worshipping Praying When I practice All that God's saying When I'm listening Working on my core, working on my core, my core, working on 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 my core. Hello kids, guess who? I'm back, it's me, Alana Jameson, with you again as we look back at another exciting chapter in our series, Living in Goshen. So, how was your week? Did you enjoy looking at light and darkness? Did you enjoy making your houses that were filled with light? What about your torch lights and gazing at the stars above? Do you know that there is a scripture that says that God knows each star by name? That is such a wonderful thought. Our God is indeed awesome. Now kids, when we looked at the plague of darkness, we learned that for the Egyptians, for three days, they did not leave their homes and they could have seen nothing. The place was so black and the darkness was so thick that they could not move. They could not even tell their left hand from their correct from their right. So we are going to do a little exercise on opposites because the opposite of left is right. It's squeezy time. Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. So let's start with an easy one. What is the opposite of darkness? Correct. 
It is light. What about pig? That's right. It's small. Fast. Slow. East. West. Very good. Now I'm going to get things a little more tough for our bigger kids. What is the opposite of transparent? Wow, you took your bulb juice if you got that one right. Yes, it is opaque. Check out that spelling now. And finally, what is the opposite of horizontal? Yes, it is vertical. Excellent. Good job. Okay, kids. Now, we know that there's a scripture that says in Matthew 5 verse 16 let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven that means kids that when we are obedient to our parents when we listen to what our teachers say when we do the right thing when we are kind to our brothers and sisters and friends, we are letting our light shine and we kill the darkness. Remember, one spark of light causes the darkness to flee and run away. Just one spark and darkness is dispelled. Now, we are not to hide our light under a bushel, is what the Bible says. We don't cup it over that people can't see, but we should let our light be set up like on a hill, almost like those lights that are, that are on the hills to prevent the ships from hitting the rocks, those lighthouses. That's how we are supposed to be. So our light is supposed to be shed abroad that everyone could see us doing the right thing and being the best that God has called us to be. So, remember kids, we love you. We are praying for you. And I'm giving you a little project for the rest of this week and the rest of this month. And let me stretch it to the rest of this year. I want you to remember in everything that you say, do, think that you must have your house, the house of your heart, it must be filled with light. Can you do that for me? So because we understand that and because you are going to show your agreement, let us all worship God together by singing Amen. So let it be. Until next time. Bye-bye. Let's worship together.
Hello kids, welcome to Words of Wisdom. The Bible tells us that we must allow God's Word to be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. So let's light up our life with some scriptures that teach us how to please God. Listen closely to what the Word of God tells us about being light. In Matthew 5, 14 through 16, it says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And Isaiah 60, one through three, it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See? Darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. You see kids, we are called to bring light where there is darkness. We are called to have wisdom, joy, truthfulness, and to walk in holiness. We may look differently, act differently, and speak differently from others around us, but the Word tells us to let our light shine because when we shine, it brings glory to God. Well, that's it for Words of Wisdom. See you next time. I am wise and I hate folly. Wisdom, you are my friend. I am wise and I hate folly. I love wisdom to the very end. Hate folly! Hey, kids. Now you can catch Project Heritage online anytime and on any device. Project Heritage Canopy Kids is now on YouTube. Yay! Just visit the Elijah Center channel on YouTube and subscribe today. Subscribing is easy. Visit www.youtube.com slash Elijah Center Global or open the YouTube app and search for Elijah Center Global. Then click the subscribe button. See you online! Living in Goshen, an audio drama podcast which gives a creative presentation of the experience of the Israelites during the plagues in Egypt, based on the account in the Bible. Some characters and dialogue have been added for dramatic effect. Living in Goshen is brought to you by Elijah Center's Project Heritage. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron once more. He asked them to pray away this plague like they'd done before. Moses prayed and the Lord sent a wind that blew strongly. All the locusts were swept away into the Red Sea. Pharaoh continued to ignore the Lord's command. So God commanded Moses, Stretch out your hand! Let darkness cover Egypt and hide everything in sight. Only in Goshen will there be light. Kids, this is serious. Egypt in total darkness? But don't be scared. Let's listen as God deals with Pharaoh's harshness. In the Egyptian capital, spectators have gathered to view the royal chariot race. It is an exciting atmosphere as everyone cheers on his favorite to win. Raya and Yuya are pulling away from the pack with tremendous speed. The crowd goes wild as their chariot scrapes past all the competition. Now they are running at blinding speed. Blink, 
and you'll miss them. Wait a minute. What's happening? What's going on here? I can't see anything. Have I gone blind? There's only darkness all around me. Help! Help me! Help! What our announcer and all the Egyptians will soon realize is that the Lord has sent yet another plague upon Egypt because Pharaoh will not do what the Lord has commanded. Darkness has fallen over all of Egypt except in Goshen. Three days later, it is still completely dark in Egypt. Can you imagine not knowing the difference between whether your eyes were open or shut? Four-year-old Akil had never imagined that before, but he was experiencing it now. He crawled slowly along the ground, trying to find his brother Karim. Ouch! Is someone there? Hey Karim, it's me. Your brother. I think I just hit my head on the bed. Where are you? I'm on the floor near to the bed. I think. I can't see anything. I'm afraid I might be blind. Then maybe I'm blind too, because I can't see anything. Just then, they heard a loud noise. Kareem, what's that noise? I think it came from the kitchen. Don't worry. It's probably mom trying to make breakfast. Or is it dinner? I don't know. I've lost track of time. Kareem is right. Their mom is in the kitchen, trying to prepare their first cooked meal in three days. My goodness. It's so dark in the kitchen, I can't see anything. How am I going to cook? Back in the bedroom, the boys discuss the darkness. Karim, why is it so dark everywhere? I'm not completely sure, but I think I heard Pharaoh shouting at that Israelite, Moses. Maybe he has something to do with it. Yes, I remember him. Well, I heard Dad speaking to Mom about him. Can you believe that there's light in Goshen? I wish we were living in Goshen. Karim? You too? Yeah, I wish we had the light like the people in Goshen. I think I'm near to you now, Kareem. I'm going to touch your arm. Ouch! That's my eye, Akil. Although Kareem and Akil are in darkness, they are aware that there's light in Goshen. They do not know, however, that there's a battle going on between darkness and light. Because they cannot hear or see the battle. This is what darkness in Egypt has to say. Darkness is my name. Frightening people is my game. I take away their sight and leave them all in fright. Yes, I'm hovering over Egypt all day and all night. But I can't go to Goshen. Their houses are filled with light. Meanwhile, over in Goshen, light responds to darkness. Darkness, you don't scare me, though others run in fear. My house is filled with light, you see. There is no darkness here. Just one spark and you are dispelled gone without a trace once i keep my heart pure darkness has no place my name is light and i am pure obedient and true i'm hanging out in goshen where their hearts are pure too let's listen to a conversation between two girls leora and asher in Goshen. Are you helping your aunt hang out the laundry today, Asha? It's such a bright, lovely day. Yeah, I hope it doesn't take too long. I really want to go fishing. Well, I think you should be thankful that you have a bright day to hang out the laundry. Have you seen what's going on in Egypt? What do you mean? 
My granddad took me onto the roof of our house and showed me that just across in Egypt there was total darkness. People can't see at all. But that doesn't even make sense. How is it that we have light but Egypt is in complete darkness? This is a plague from God. He is showing his power and strength. The Egyptians can't compare to our God and they are learning that. God is also protecting us in Goshen. I feel a little bit scared now. What if the darkness spreads to Goshen? Don't be afraid, Asha. God promised that once we keep our hearts pure, our houses will be filled with light. This means that you don't need to be afraid. The same powerful God who is creating these plagues is the same almighty God that is keeping us safe. Aren't you happy that you have an almighty God on your side? Uh Uh-huh. You still sound a little unsure. I think we should pray for courage. Lord, we know that you are big, powerful and mighty. You care for us and have promised that if we keep our hearts pure, you will fill our houses with light. We pray for courage to obey you. Help us to be bold and confident in what you say. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Leora. I feel confident already. God is with us. We do not need to be afraid. Leora and Asha are right, kids. God protects us when our hearts are full of light. And to remind you, we have a special treat for you. We are going to learn a song about darkness and light. Now listen to the words and sing along. Darkness fills the night Uh -uh. Dark morn or water plight Thick as a blanket in my sight Can't even tell my left hand From my right Darkness fills the night My house is filled with light No blindness, only sight Living in Goshen is just right Protected by God's cover Day and night My house is filled with light My house is filled with light Uh Uh-huh No blindness, only sight So kids, today we learned that when our hearts are filled with light, darkness cannot come near us. But how do we fill our hearts with light? You may discuss this question with a parent, another adult, or even a sibling. For a better understanding of what happens in this episode, read Exodus chapter 10 verses 21 to 29. That was Living in Goshen. Verses 21 to 29. What do you remember? Let's find out. What did God tell Moses to do this time? A. Strike the ground. B. Stretch his hand toward the sky. Or C. Warn fair about what God was going to do.
That's right. God told Moses to stretch his hand toward the sky. Exodus chapter 10 verse 21 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky so that darkness spreads over Egypt. Darkness that can be felt. How long did the darkness cover Egypt? A. Three days. B. Seven days. C. Until the next day. That's right, a home run. Darkness covered Egypt for three days. Exodus 10 verse 22 says, So Moses stretched out his hand towards the sky, and total darkness covered all Egypt for three days. True or false? Some of the Israelites had darkness for three days. Definitely false. Exodus chapter 10 verse 23 says, No one could see anyone else or move about for three days. Yet all the Israelites had light in the places where they lived. Who did Pharaoh say Moses should leave behind? A. Their women and children. B. Their flocks and herds. C. All their able-bodied men. Well done! Pharaoh said to Moses that they should leave all their flocks and herds behind. Exodus 10 verse 24 says, Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and said, Go worship the Lord. Even your women and children may go with you. Only leave your flocks and herds behind. Why did Moses say they needed to take the livestock with them? A. So they would have food to eat. B. So the animals would be safe. Or C. Because they would need some of them to offer sacrifices to God. Excellent! C. Because they would need some of them to offer sacrifices to God. Exodus chapter 10 verse 26 says, Our livestock too must go with us. Not a hoof is to be left behind. We have to use some of them in worshiping the Lord our God. And until we get there, we will not know what we are to use to worship the Lord. Pharaoh's heart was still hard. What did he tell Moses? A. To get off his sight and not appear before him again. B. To pray and ask God not to send any more plagues. C. To get the Israelites ready to leave. Good job! Pharaoh told Moses to get out of his sight and not appear before him again. Exodus 10 verse 28 says, Pharaoh said to Moses, Get out of my sight and make sure you do not appear before me again. The day you see my face, you will die. Thanks for playing. See you next time.
us next time for Canopy Kids on ECTV.